In today's video, we will review some basic features of the Garmin G1000 glass cockpit that every pilot should know. The Garmin G1000 electronic flight display is one of the most widely used glass cockpits in aviation today, so it is important that pilots get familiar with how to use the G1000 before beginning flight lessons or a flight review or check ride. This video will specifically review how to load a simple flight plan in the G1000, how to tune the navigation and communication frequencies, setting the altimeter, and how to toggle between the GPS and VOR modes on the CDI display. Today we have a short VFR flight planned from Renton Municipal Airport in Renton, Washington to Payne Field in Everett. To load a flight plan, we first need to press the FPL button on the bottom right of the flight display. Since we are departing from Renton Municipal Airport, enter the, the airport identifier, which in this case is KRNT. We then select runway 34 since that is the runway we are departing from. We will then select Kilo Papa Alpha Echo, which is the airport identifier for Payne Field and Everett. We'll select the runway 34 right since the winds are favoring landing on runway 34. As you can see, the flight plan is now displayed on the Garmin GPS with the magenta line. To display an inset map on G1000 flight display, click the map slash HSI button at the bottom and then tap layout and select inset map. There will now be an inset map displayed on the primary flight display at the bottom left of the G1000. If you would like to display the map inside the HSI, just press the HSI map button at the bottom as shown. You can zoom the map in and pan out by using the range dial on the right of the flight display. To remove the inset map, just click the map off button. Next, we will tune in our communication frequencies in the top right of the G1000 flight display. The main comm frequency is shown on the left and the standby frequency is displayed on the right. We currently have the Renton Tower frequency of 124.7 as the main frequency and Renton Ground of 121.6 selected as the standby frequency. To switch between COM1 and COM2, just hit the communication button as shown. To swap the main and standby frequencies, just hit the button in the upper right as shown with the two arrows. To change the bigger numbers, use the bigger knob, and to change the smaller numbers, use the smaller knob. The navigation frequencies are shown on the top left of the G1000 flight display, and the process for changing the frequencies and swapping the main and standby frequencies is the same as was shown for the communication frequencies. We'll tune in the pain field VOR frequency of 110.6 into the NAV1. Notice when we select the pain field VOR, the letter identifier shows up as PAE, also known as Papa Alpha Echo, as shown. Now let's set the pain field VOR into the CDI. Select the CDI button at the bottom of the electronic flight display. The magenta GPS course for our flight plan now displays in the CDI. Press the CDI button again to toggle between the GPS and VOR. Now the VOR course displays in green in the CDI display. To set the VOR course, just use the triangle button on the right of the flight display as shown. If we turn the course knob to a course of 334, we can see the CDI needle is now centered, meaning we are pointed towards the 334 degree radial of the pain field VOR. The last thing we will show in this video is how to set the altimeter on the Garmin G1000. Turn the large part of the course slash barometric knob to set the altimeter. Turn the knob to the right to increase the altimeter setting and to the left to decrease the altimeter setting. The altimeter setting today at Rent Municipal is currently 30.19, so we will set that into the altimeter as shown. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you now have a better understanding of some of the basic features on the Garmin G1000. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational video.